Patterns of Natural Selection. Brought to you by Curious Moranland, where science literacy will make America great. So, I'm going to use two things here. Take a look at this graph. Now, it's a line graph. Before students start saying, no, no, you shouldn't do that. These are bar. This is not a... Imagine this between being between 0 and, say, a 5, and this is 6. So these are this is average range, and this is a smaller range. This is the larger range. So what we want to do, and this is what was done in my class, and so I'm making this video for my students to kind of uh, catch up if they missed. So here's the patterns. There's three distinct patterns that can be applied to a graph. Now, you'll notice down here I have four of them because this one is going to be a little different because this can be one of the causative agents, uh, agents of these other ones. So think about it. Natural selection can affect the frequency of a heritable trait, leading to different possibilities. So let's look at the first one. What I want to do is show the graph and then come back to here and copy down some notes on it. So this is uh, also makeup work for my students. Okay, so every one of these graphs, the blue line will be the beginning, and then after some time, assume we took some measurements and looked at the results afterwards. Remember, evolution is changed in the legal frequency, and the driving force of evolution is natural selection. That's where the adaptations come in. Um, there's a look here. So after. So look at the average. The average before was in the medium range. So we would have to investigate and find, well, why did this happen? And that's how we, we, we can look at the different mechanisms of evolution. But natural selection, um, smaller population, sex selection, and mutation, random mutation, um, those are some of the big causes there. So pause the video and copy down this particular slide. Now, one thing I should point out in class, we talk about all these, but I usually, at this point, I have them focus on the shift in one direction. So I'm going to underline what my students copied down. We read and then we copied down. So what we have is a picture, a picture, so here's directional selection, and a description, and of course the title. But we didn't draw this picture, we drew this picture. So pause the video and you'll see the uh, directional selection. And let's look at another example. So now, this is the before for a pattern called stabilizing. Let's look at the graph and then look at the notes and see if they match up. So imagine here's the small section, here's the medium, here's the large, here's what happens here afterwards. Let's take the blue and the red and overlay them. Okay, so look what happened. The small decreased. How about if we add some arrows? So small went from it was still not a large one, but it's decreased. The medium, in, although it was already started out larger, it's now even larger. The narrowing of this, and look at this, large has decreased. So this is a pattern called stabilizing selection. In class, I had my students start here and then underline, I'll underline what they copied. So this is the, over here, stabilizing. That's stabilizing. You'll notice the extremes. It says it favors the metal and reduces the extremes. And this is a pattern seen in nature. Nature favors the heterozygous. The heterozygous will preserve. Now remember, when I say heterozygous, we're talking about one trait. As you read through this, notice that it says favorable intermediate variants over the extreme, phenotypes. We're still going back to understanding phenotypes and variants, meaning variation in traits. Darwin said there was variation in species that there is a limited resources that's, and there's going to be a competition for those resources. And the variance, the select natural selection puts pressure on the ones that are going to survive and reproduce. And this is these graphs are showing those rates. So let's look at a third pattern. So here's before. Now, oh, look at this. Let's add some arrows. So now, so small went from here up to here. Medium dropped drastically, and large went up. So what we're seeing, I'm just going to, I'm not going to circle it, but I'm just going to write a circle. I'm just going to circle it with the mouse. If you see here, 
these could actually become two groups. If they no longer interbreed, then we would list them as different species. This is an example where our speciation can occur. I'm going to do another video on speciation and convergent and divergent evolution. And that will also help us review some more comparative anatomy terms like homologous structures and things like an analogous. So let's write down the facts. So again, with my class, I actually only had them copy this part. But read the top. It, uh, inter environmental conditions favor the individuals at both. Now, let's rem let us remind you, evolution affects populations. So it should say the individuals of the population that we're studying. In the phenotypic range, they favor the extremes over the intermediate. Intermediate is the same as saying medium in, the, in my specific example. So here is what they're calling diversifying in, the, in this PowerPoint, this is from the Campbell textbook, we're calling disruptive. It will disrupt the, the flow of genes to the point that you could actually have, you could have different organisms, right here, this one right here, and this one right here, if the medium goes down so much that it almost it's like it becomes a barrier and I've just really ruined that so let me try that again it's almost like this becomes a barrier and this group and this group may no longer inter interbreed and that is called disruptive selection so let's look at the graph again and again, pause the video at any time or rewatch if you're copying down the notes. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Brought to you by Curious Marineland.